Bringle, and I'm here for Roco Talks. I'm about to go interview Pat Legg, local artist here in Salisbury. I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Hi, Pat. Uh, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in West Virginia, but I lived there a very short period, moved to Arizona, so I, I call both states, mostly West Virginia, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Oh, well, now that's, a, that's an open-ended question. I didn't know, and I didn't even think about being an artist until after I had, had my children. So here I am trying to raise three kids, one in diapers or two in diapers, and decided I wanted to paint. How that came about was an artist in um, Arizona. My uh, husband and I had, at the time, had um, uh, a hobby shop. She came in, Beverly. She wanted to buy some art products. We had very few because we had more crafts. Anyway, I said, oh, you're an artist, like everybody does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, she said, yeah, I love to paint. So she showed me her little portfolio, her little book of paintings. We chose to meet. It just so happened she had three kids, and I had, I mean, I had three, and she had four. So here we are meeting in the middle, and it's like a desert, because mm -hmm. they had built their home in the desert. And we're in a little trailer, a little camper, watching all seven kids play and painting. So. That's how I began, and that just spurred such a, an interest in art. That must have been distracting with so many kids running around. Well, I don't think so, because they had the wide open, you know, Arizona. They had the wide open space. They were all playing, and she was just showing me what she knew. And uh, So it didn't break your uh, creativity at all? No, to have that continued. I mean, we, we painted together maybe three or four times, or that's about it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I then bought paints and started doing it on my own. And with the children, I'd have, you know, there were two in school at least uh, at one time. So I would wait till they were in bed and paint till uh, 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. So whenever you would wait and go paint, I how did you know what to paint? What inspired you? Mm. I'm really drawn, you'll notice in any landscapes that I have, when I do have landscapes, I love portraiture, that's my favorite. But what draws me is the, about portraits and landscape, is the intimacy of both. And I say that meaning, um, I absolutely love, if I'm doing a, 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 the scene of a, a lake or a, a creek, instead of the whole scene, as most landscapes are, I tend to zoom in with my camera, with my eye, and picture that rock with that little, you know. So very intimate. And to me, that is the same thing as portraiture and still life. I still feel like there's an intimate touch there or feeling. Absolutely. I hope. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And yeah. I think it conveys well in your work as well. So. Oh, thank you. Um, what do you find to be the most problematic during your creative process? Mm. The, that's just it, the creative process. I'm kind of a, a um, not sentimental, more than a, um, I procrastinate. So the very first hardest thing for me, and I hear it's for many artists, is the first brush on the canvas. I go through a process myself to where I'm, I'm seeing that painting in my head before I even paint it anyway. And so when you look at a canvas, of course, that's why most artists are taught and we're taught to put color on there first. So you'll tone your canvas first and that kind of gets away from that scary, you know, that scary white, whiteness. So the first stroke, the first stroke, and I start getting kind of, whew, and then as soon as I get into it, it's just, you know, it's okay, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, good. <laughs> so to speak, it's just that, it's just that getting that, that spark. You know, just, just forcing yourself to do it? Well, it's not a forcing. It is a, a moody. Um, I could never be an artist, I think, that had to produce. Matter of fact, I did study uh, for a brief period uh, advertising design. Oh. And, yeah. And, of course, I, was, I had already been painting quite a while. But, you know, after studying that and seeing how detailed and how, how spontaneous you had to be, and I thought, oh, gosh, that's not me. I, you know, I, I, I lock myself in a room and paint for hours. I just, you know, somebody to call and say, you need this in 15 minutes or next, the next day. It's like, oh, that's not what art's about. Right. Not for me. So what is it about for you? Mm. I get very emotional with what I paint, depending on what it is. 
some more than others. For instance, the one over here with the, with the gentleman behind you, um, I had lost my brother not long ago, about a little over a year. And this, came, this painting came to, to mind and I worked on it in my head and then I, I needed to find a reference and I do look at reference material. For the gentleman, he reminded my, my brother for some reason, and, and it is kind of a sad, forlorn, forlorn painting, and I don't think that I tend to paint that way, but sometimes I've been told that I do. Hmm. So I do paint on emotion a lot. Well, I've seen in previous interviews that uh, you make reference to the Dutch style of art, mm -hmm. and that your style has sort of evolved from the Dutch style. Now, is there a <clears throat> excuse me, a particular era or artist that has made its more profound impact, I should say? At least a couple, and pro what comes to mind is Vermeer and Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Of course, that's everybody's answer, I'm sure, but, but that is uh, basically some of the technique that they used. I have tweaked it a bit and not doing quite the effort that they did. I don't crush my oils. I mean, I don't make my own paint. I don't stretch my own canvases, I could, but I don't. I'd rather do the process of painting than say waste all the time doing that. So uh, they inspire me because when you paint it, with any artist, it's about the light mm -hmm. and it's about seeing. So, you know, as I tell my students, because I do teach the, this method uh, now and then, privately or semi-privately, the first thing I say is, you, first of all, to learn to paint, you have to see, well, that's not saying much for, but anyway, you have to learn to see. And they don't understand until they get into the painting. And when I'm looking at this still life in front that they're painting, and I say, well, paint that shadow or that, you know, well, what are you talking about? So I go up there and I say, look at this fine line. This is a shadow. That's what's going to turn the roundness of that bowl or that picture. Oh, my goodness, I hadn't even seen that. So it's a matter of seeing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it really is. I agree. So if I say if you can see, you can paint. And that, the rest is just training and techni technicality. Mm -hmm. So what piece of advice would you give a starting artist that you wish that someone had given you? Hmm. Gee, I don't know. Um, I really don't know how to answer that. Probably, uh, I am kind of patient, but it does take patience, I think. And, uh, and I'll say again, if you want to paint, I think anyone can paint. They say it's always, you know, within you, it's, it's built within you. Some people, I believe it comes easier to. Maybe I'm one of those people, maybe not. But personally, I felt like I've worked really hard, you know, to, to get where I am and to do what I do. But you can paint, it's the desire. So if you, you be patient and have the desire to paint, that's what I would say. You'll get there. That's yeah. what I would say. Yeah, I agree. Really? Yeah. Totally. Patience. Good. So, what are your plans for the future? Oh, <laughs> funny you ask. <laughs> I happen to be having a show coming up here at Railwalk Studios in Salisbury, and it will be in January of, of uh, 016. Um, it's going to be a kind of a unique in that instead of a typical show and reception, just so happens that month is my birthday, so I'm gonna turn it into a celebration. I'm doing all new work. Uh, it's gonna have, it's gonna be theme-based. Uh, I'm not uh, exposing the theme base yet of what it will be, but let's just say it, it will be a little different than most receptions, I think, or some. You know, uh, you don't have to, I'm going to be in period dress. Let's put it that way. Interesting. Yeah. I'm intrigued. I'll be in a period dress of the period, whichever, you know, what it is. And um, who knows, there might be some other people wandering in. That's so when is the opening the for this show? Well, I haven't set a date because it's a little forward yet, but I'm hoping within the first, well, the opening will be in 1st of January in that area. We show here at Real Walk the whole month. Mm but we have a reception generally within the first week. But, uh, so, but this time I think it's gonna be in the second week, mm -hmm. some date, maybe the Friday of the second week of January. Not positive, but 
that's what I'm aiming for. That's exciting. You'll see it. It'll be out. In, it'll be out in the papers and maybe kind of. A, I'm hoping to do maybe a little, um, uh, a little bit of a teaser or a. Um, what am I trying to say with movies when it? Oh, a uh, trailer. Thank you. Like a trailer, preview kind of of what it might be. Hmm. It's going to be fun. I guarantee. Oh, excellent. So you guys got to come. The anticipation. Um, so are there any um, thoughts that you have just in general about being an artist that you feel you should just tell someone that you're not ordinarily asked? Mm. Any stigmas that you find or what have you, anything? I think mostly the stigmas are, are what people mostly comment to me about is um, for me anyway is 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 the the fact that I feel like I need to be in a mood in the mood to paint um, you know painting to me is like any other art or craft or you know to perfect it you need to put a lot of time in it but there are times when when I just need that for instance the creative process in me begins hours sometimes days before I decide to paint and that might entail just looking through, browsing through art magazines or going to a gallery. Um, so that's how it starts for me. That's the process. I'm already painting. It just hasn't made it to the canvas yet, but it will. But, but some folks don't see that. It's like, ah, when are you going to paint? It's time to paint. No, I, I'm, ready. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. So I see it first. I usually do see it first before I even put a brush to the canvas. To Tolstoy's perspective on true art and what makes true art is defined by how the public sees it and is sort of balanced on the public seeing it. And so therefore, if <laughs> something is to be classified as art at all, if it's worthy enough of that name, that it needs to convey the true sincerity and singular emotion of the artist. So it raises questions. Um, does the art exist, you know, after an artist creates it, if they were to burn it? Or, <laughs> so that begs the question, if the last man dies, is there any art left? Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, that's pretty deep. Um, like I said before, it's kind of like the, the tree that falls in the forest. I believe, I believe art isn't necessarily, there's no right or wrong in art and that we don't all agree as artists, but as far as it lasting, I hope so. I told my, I told my clients that it does forever, <laughs> it'll outlast them. But as far as them, I don't know, I don't know. It, um, that's a loaded question. I think it, whether you hear it, whether you see it or not, it's there and it's there for the next person. Now the last person has died, but we don't know. We don't know. It's as open as, as his question. We don't know if there's going to be another, another. <laughs> so exactly. if there is, then they're going to discover my art. Very interesting. <laughs> and they're going to say, Your wonder legacy. what this is. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, cool. That's all I can say. There's going to be, it's not done. It's not done yet. And I think you just exemplified, you know, what it is to be an artist, is taking something that's complex and simplifying it into a way that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you. For this lovely talk. Thank you, Wendy. I'm Wendy Bringle with Roco Talks.